So recently, the Chicago Bears made headlines when they decided to fire Matt Nagy after four seasons. And uh, there's been a lot of recency bias in the Bears community about Matt Nagy saying that he is the worst head coach in Chicago Bears history. And I'm sorry, but that's just simply not the case. I know he was bad, but uh, he is not the worst head coach we've ever had. No, my friends, that honor goes to Mark Trestman. I'm going to need some help for this one. What? So to understand why the Bears brought in Tressman in the first place, you have to understand where they were in 2013. The Bears had just fired Lovey Smith, one of the most successful coaches they've had in franchise history. He was a coach from 2004 to 2012, and he brought the Bears to three division wins, two NFC Championship appearances, and a Super Bowl appearance. So why was he fired? Well, the Bears front office had started to view Lovey Smith as the coach that just couldn't get the Bears over the hump. Yes, they had been consistently good, but over Lovey's last five seasons, they had gotten one playoff win, and it was against the 7-9 Seahawks. They viewed the team as just being on the cusp of a Super Bowl run, and they were probably right. There was a lot of really solid players still on that team. You had Lance Briggs, Peanut Tillman, Devin Hester, Matt Forte, Jay Cutler had just come in. Like, this was a solid team that was looking to have a lot of playoff ambition in the near future. The Bears just thought that Lovey Smith wasn't the right coach to take that team to the Super Bowl and they they could have been right the league was starting to pass him by in terms of his style of defense and he had an anemic offense all the time he never was able to figure out how to get the right offensive coordinator with his team so uh, they just decided to let him go and you know whether that was the right move or not is up to you but uh, that's where the Bears were and that's what happened so the Bears set their sights on an offensive-minded quarterback whisper that could lead their team to the playoffs. They had just gotten Jay Cutler from Denver for two first-round picks, and they wanted the right coach that can get him moving the way that they knew that he could. The dude had put up great numbers in Denver, and they knew that they could unlock that in Chicago. The team would be completely unstoppable. They ended up landing on Mark Trussman from the Canadian Football League. He had led the Alouettes to two straight Grey Cups with one of the best offenses that league had ever seen. Yes, it was the CFL and the a lot different from the NFL but if you're able to put up a great offense like that in one league you're probably able to do it in another they're not that different Bears general manager at the time Phil Emery was so sure that Mark Tresson was the guy he passed on reigning coach of the year Bruce Arians because he knew for sure that Mark Tresson was the guy to get this team rolling Bruce Arians <laughs> now before I start completely dogging on Tressman, I do want to talk about you know, the positives that they had. The Bears offense under Tresman's first year in 2013 was ranked second in the league behind only Peyton Manning and the Broncos. And that was literally the greatest offensive team of all time. So yeah, I'd say that's pretty good. He was able to figure out an offense better than so many coaches in the NFL. It was honestly really, really cool to see. The defense, though, on the other hand, suffered greatly. First of all, they lost Brian Erlacher, the face of the franchise, the total leader of the team. He was essentially forced out by Phil Emery and uh, just decided to retire. And then the guy that was brought in by Mark Trussman to be his defensive coordinator was told by the Bears front office to run Lovey Smith's old defense, which this coordinator was not at all familiar with. I mean, come on. The dude had no experience running that kind of defense, so he was completely out of his element and that entire defense suffered. It's just like, I mean, if you want Lovey Smith's defense, then why did you fire Lovey Smith? All that aside though, there was a lot to be optimistic about with the Bears after the 2013 season. They put up a great offensive showing. Everything was looking like it was coming together. Yes, that defense was terrible, but the offense was able to make up for it. They just barely missed the playoffs. So, you know, everybody was looking forward to the Bears being even better in 2014 and maybe making a deep playoff run. And that's when the wheels fell off, went into a ditch and then exploded. At this point, I'd like to mention exactly what kind of person Mark Tressman is. This dude knows football like the back of his hand. He's the kind of guy that could sit in a room and watch film for hours and hours on end. And he knew the X's and O's better than so many people in the league. However, he was completely not a player's coach. The dude was socially inept. He just did not know how to lead a team. So he took a very backseat approach when it came to running this organization, which was a huge departure from Lovey Smith, who was an active part and leader of the team day in and day out. He was part of that and he was their brother the entire time. Mark Trussman was kind of just the kind of guy that would be a leader from the back of the room and just kind of let the leaders of the team on the field 
be the leaders of the locker room, which is not how Lovey Smith did it, and that came as a shock to a lot of players. Now, it's not like this approach is completely flawed. I mean, that, that, that approach can work if you have a winning culture already established, but the Bears really didn't. I mean, they finished eight and eight and they hadn't made the playoffs in three years. And you know, as long as you're consistently winning, that works. But once the winning stops, the players are going to start to rebel. And boy, was the winning about to stop. In 2014, the Bears lost six of their first nine games. That amazing offense from last season evaporated from the second ranked offense to the 23rd ranked offense. And the defense somehow got even worse. While all of that was going down on the field, the locker room had had completely fallen apart. The culture that had been established had gone into complete disarray because the team leaders that were on the field, that were now the leaders of the locker room with this style of coaching, that worked as long as they were winning, but now that they weren't winning anymore, they had stopped caring and started actively speaking out against the coaches and all of the other players started following suit and stopped believing in the vision that Mark Tressman was trying to go with. And it's not like Mark Tressman's vision that he had was a very good one anyway, because it didn't lead to any success. They had lost six of their first nine games. The locker room was completely lost. And I'm not talking about just players feuding with coaches. I'm talking about players going head to head with other players. Locker room fights were common in this team. Practices all the time. P players were throwing temper tantrums and just not caring. As the losses began to pile up, accusation and blame was being flown back and forth. It wasn't like they were a team. Remember, football is the ultimate team sport. It only works with all the cogs moving at the same time. These guys began throwing blame at each other and it became one man versus all instead of, you know, a together as a team. There were people throwing accusations after every single game. Jay Cutler and Brandon Marshall would go on the same radio station two hours apart and talk trash about each other. There was an incident where Aaron Cromer, the offensive coordinator of the team, talked trash about Jay Cutler to Ian Rappaport and then spent weeks denying it before eventually admitting that it was him, crying in front of the locker room, issuing a tear-filled apology to the entire team. What a fiasco. The players had zero respect for each other, zero respect for the coaches, and why was this? Because Mark Trestman had no, and I mean completely no discipline on this team whatsoever. They were one of the top ranked teams in terms of penalties. I mean, that is absolutely a game killer. And it's because these players ha didn't have any discipline on the field or off the field. There was an incident in practice where defensive tackle Jeremiah Ratliff threw an absolute temper tantrum, destroyed a play clock, slammed an offensive coach to the ground. And while all of the players and coaches were trying to get him to calm down and practice had completely stopped, Mark Trustman was just on the side, watching it with his arms folded, completely silent and just not taking action at all. Not only did Jeremiah Ratliff leave this situation completely unpunished, the next week, he was made one of the team captains. Mark, what are you doing? While all that was going on off the field, on the field, things were absolutely bleak, especially this two game stretch where the Bears went into Foxborough against Tom Brady and the Patriots and got absolutely manhandled. 51 to 23. Then the very next week, going into Green Bay and getting completely manhandled by Aaron Rodgers, 55 to 14. The score at halftime was 42 to zero. There are only ever been two teams to ever give up 50 plus points in two consecutive games. The 1923 Rochester Jeffersons and the 2014 Chicago Bears. Did I mention their bye week was between these two games? You know what Bruce Arians was doing this very same year? Winning coach of the year. Great decisions, Bears. Just, George McCaskey, you, you have nothing but my love. Mark Trussman had a plan though. That's right, he knew how to fix this offense. Mark Trussman's plan to fix this team and get them to the playoffs and revive this offense that he knew he could get, his plan, was to bench Jay Cutler. That's right, Jay Cutler, the guy that put up 3,700 yards that season, the guy the Bears had given up two first round picks for, the guy Mark Trussman was brought in specifically to develop, the guy that had just been given a seven year, $100 million extension the previous off season, was benched for Jimmy Clausen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course that didn't work. The Bears embarrassed themselves against the Detroit Lions with Jay Cutler watching from the sidelines. Yeah, I bet Matt Nagy's looking pretty good right now. 
Tressman really thought that benching Jay Cutler for Jimmy Clausen was going to revive this offense and bring the team success. And that Jay Cutler was the reason for the Bears' woes. It wasn't Mark Tressman's fault. It wasn't the locker room being completely ruined under his watch. No, 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 no. It was Jay Cutler and all of his interceptions he throws. Not his offensive line. No, it's Jay Cutler. He's the problem. He obviously did it completely out of spite and it backfired completely. The Bears would end up losing their last four games, finishing 5-11, and and Mark Tressman was fired after just two seasons. Look, I don't like telling this story. I don't enjoy reveling in how terrible the Bears were in 2013 and 2014. It's just that Mark Trestman was brought in to do what Lovey Smith couldn't do, and that's fix the offense. But in that effort, they lost the defense, which was the Bears' strong suit. And when the offense wasn't producing, you had a football team that was very lost. I think Jay Cutler put it best when he said, The locker room was in disarray. It was a complete and utter shit show. I like Mark. We get along. It's just that he had a different philosophy. It's the NFL. It's business. You either perform or you don't perform. You obviously have to be the kind of good human, but there's some dudes who just run crazy in the NFL. Off the field, they do whatever they want, and they come in, and they get the job done. It is what it is. Mark kind of wanted to create a culture of better humans, and that's great if you're winning, but as soon as you're not winning, it's a problem. Guys are like, I'm here to win. I'm here to get paid and I'm here to win. I don't care about becoming a better human right now. So that's where it all fell apart. We started losing games in that second year and that was it. The wheels fell off and there was no getting it back. Brandon Marshall explained, I just think that he didn't have a chance because Lovey leaves in that locker room. It was just too early to be doing the things that he did with that locker room and had guys that weren't buying in from the defensive side and that made it extremely hard. He would later say, I think that was a tough thing for us in Chicago because that locker room was so tight. You had Brian Erlacher, Lance Briggs, Peanut Tillman, these guys that were used to one way of approaching it. And when something new was introduced, it was like a shock to their system. And that was the toughest thing. We're talking about big personalities. And what Marshall is saying completely holds true. I mean, the players loved Lovey Smith and the defense was where the majority of leaders on the team were. So when you get this new GM and head coach that basically leave the defense behind, yeah, a lot of guys aren't gonna buy into it. What I hope the Bears have done is learn from the Mark Tressman experiment. I mean, it's a lesson in finding the right head coach for your players and finding the right mindset for an NFL head coach. And it's a lesson in finding a head coach that can keep your players accountable. It seems like the Bears have learned hiring Matt Eberflus as their next coach, who is a guy that emphasizes discipline and accountability. But I wish no team ever has to experience the dysfunction that was the Mark Tressman era. Except the Packers. F*** the Packers.